standing by. Hey, Chuck, we're on. We are joined by Coach Luke Fickle from Cincinnati. Uh, the Bearcats are 9-1 and one overall, 5-1 and one in the American. Uh, Cincinnati hosted USF last Saturday, and Cincinnati won the game 35-23. to 23. Up next for the Bearcats, they'll be on the road this week to face UCF uh, in Orlando on Saturday. The game will be 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern time on ABC. Uh, Coach, thank you for joining us, as always, on the call. If you just take a minute to tie up the win against USF, please. And we expect to see you as you head to Orlando uh, for the game against UCF. Uh, it, it was a tough fought battle. I mean, it was a tale of kind of two halves. Uh, we came out really the second half, I thought, and played really, really well. We kind of gathered ourselves. I think we got a little emotional before the game, um, probably a little too high, and, and kind of plummeted as we went out there. Uh, gave up some big plays defensively, which we hadn't done as, as much the entire year, uh, but really kind of came together in the second half, and our offense kind of, you know, really kind of gave us the energy and the momentum by running the football the way they did and then making some big plays. So, uh, we were able to, you know, obviously put an eight and a, mi- eight and a half minute drive together at the end of the game to kind of close it out and seal it, which is uh, really just kind of an amazing, uh, especially the way we played against them last year. We couldn't, I don't think we could move the ball uh, much at all. So it, it uh, you know, it was a tale of two halves, but uh, really we ended up playing really well there in the in the second half and made some great adjustments. Uh, and then obviously this week it's it's you know a big big game, first time uh, a lot of these guys have been on a stage like this and. We got to be able to control our emotions again, and and handle the, the the situation, the scene, and what it's all about is is getting to game time and eight o'clock, at being at our best, not not throughout all the other hype stuff that's uh, going to be done throughout this entire week. Any questions for Coach Luke Pickle, please star one on your telephone keypad to join the queue. Then the operator will introduce you. We'll hear first from Chris uh, Vanini with the Athletic. Hey, Luke, uh, what do you make of UCF this year under Hypo, and is there anything different uh, that they're doing compared to last year? I think they are a bit different. Uh, I I know offensively they are. You know, you would think it's, well, it's still the same tempo type of stuff, and it's still, you know, some some quarterback run situation. But I think, uh, you know, it's uniquely different. Uh, I don't know that I've really played against uh, what what it is that they do, the, the tempo, the pace at which they play at, and, um, you know, I think it's quite unique. So, obviously, when you got a quarterback like McKenzie, and not just, you know, because he, you know, he's a great runner of any sort, but the ability for him to manage at the pace that they go and to make the decisions. Usually, he, you would kind of say, oh, "Well, we're gonna we're gonna make some mistakes if we're gonna go at, at this this pace and at this tempo." But uh, he doesn't make many mistakes, uh, and, and it's you know, almost uh, not amazing, but it's it, it's close to it to, to see the. The, the pace that he plays at and the, the few mistakes that he makes. In, do you talk to you guys at all about kind of the fanfare around this game? It's probably the biggest game of the week, uh, college game day there. Um, probably, you know, come off last year uh, to where you guys are now. Do you, do you talk about that at all? We do. I mean, we're not going to, you know, there's an elephant in the room, and, and we haven't talked much about it yet. You know, we practice on Sunday. We're off on Monday. Uh, we'll go get rolling here on Tuesday uh, I wanted to make sure Sunday was about you know celebrating the things that we did uh, on Saturday night and uh, cleaning up the stuff from there and, and then moving forward so uh, you know we don't want to get on to the emotional side of things too quick so I think it's a kind of unique for us and and how we need to handle this week and everything that's going to go on around here appreciate it thank you thanks We'll hear next from Adam Rittenberg with ESPN.com. Hi, Luke. When, when you just look at this season and what's gone into it, what would have been the biggest factors for you guys to have the success you've had so far? I think it's leadership. I think the ability for you know the, the few seniors that we really have, um, that they play really well, you know, and then that they become great leaders. And I mean that being examples. You know, we got a quarterback that was a two-year starter that, uh, you know, has only taken – a few snaps this entire year, but his ability to, you know, be a part of the team, his ability to prepare, his ability uh, to still do the things that he's done um, has been an incredible example. You know, Cortez Broughton and Kamani Fitz and Marquise Copeland and Garrett Campbell are seniors who I would tell you that they're playing uh, above their their God-given abilities. I mean, they they believe in the things we're doing and uh, they take coaching really well and uh, they've been kind of the the reason for for, – 
the success that we've had. When you're in games and every game is different, I mean, are you? Was there a moment where you kind of sense, okay, we're learning how to win, we're building a habit that goes into winning on a consistent basis? Well, I mean, I think we learned a lot at UCLA, and and just how to finish. You know, where last year we never, I mean, even the games we won, I can't say we, I can't, I'm mean, not saying we didn't win them, but you know, Miami of Ohio in some ways handed it to us and Tulane in some ways handed it to us and UConn in some ways handed it to us with mishaps on their side of things. Um, our ability from the start of that UCLA to find a way to win down the stretch, I think is where our guys have grown from. And this week is another great example this past week. You know, we, you know, we're in a dog fight. I mean, 16 or 14 to 12, 16, 12, 16, 14 at half. And we're down and we've already, you know, lost momentum. We missed a field goal. Um, but the ability to come out the second half and play the way we did uh, is, you know, a lot of maturity. Thanks, Luke. We'll hear next from Trace Trialco with Nightline Sports Network. Uh, hello, Coach. Uh, last year, UCF goes to Cincinnati, wins decidedly, and uh, now you're in a prime time high-profile showcase in Orlando this week. Could you just reflect on how you felt then and just how your club has uh, bought into the process and how they've grown and matured in that? It's come a long way, and, and I don't – it's not just the talent level. I mean, last year, uh, whatever the score was, it wasn't as close as whatever the score was, to be honest with you. Um, you know, and, and for us to, you know, kind of even in off season to use a lot of those situations – um, not just his motivation, but ability to learn from. Because in the moment, the way it happened last year, it was really tough to learn from a lot of things because it was, you know, almost too chaotic and almost, you know, it, it was just very difficult. So for for these guys to, you know, to learn from those things and and through the off season, um, learn from not just the mistakes, but but how those things all went about, um, has shown the growth. And I don't just mean as football players. I mean the growth is understand that they can't do it by themselves. That, you know, you can't be a great defensive lineman without three other guys around you. They're going to give you an opportunity, you know, to get some one-on-ones and give you an opportunity, um, you know, to make some plays based on what they do. Uh, same thing with the, you know, at, at our quarterback position, our ability to handle, I don't want to say a controversy, but a battle at the the position where everybody wants to focus and talk about, you know. Uh, those two guys have become really good friends and uh, throughout the entire season have made each other better and, you know, it wouldn't. It wasn't like that the year before when when we had a you know kind of a quarterback battle going on, or even at the beginning of the year. Uh, so their ability to mature past that and understand that, you know, this is about something bigger than themselves. Would you talk about the play of your offenses and defensive lines and how you think they match up with UCF from what you're seeing on film? Well, I, I think that it's going to be a good matchup. I mean, I think UCF's offensive line has, um, you know, probably one of the better ones that we've seen. And I think that that's where we've had a lot of success this year is just our ability for, you know, us to play six, seven, eight guys up front defensive line-wise. Um, they've, you know, you go back to the Navy game and some of those situations, and they were, they were a big difference in, in, in that game. I think it'll be a much more of a, you know, evenly matched this week, and it's going to come down to you know, a, lot, a lot of one-on-ones up front because there's a lot of mano a mano when, when you look at what they do offensively and with spreading you out with the ability for the quarterback to always be an option. Um, so I think that's going to be a real challenge. It's going to be probably the biggest challenge those guys up front have had. Everybody thinks pass rush, but the reality is that ball comes out really, really quick. You need to be disciplined. You need to um, have the ability to win some of those one-on-ones. And then offensive line-wise, I mean, I think those guys are just, you know, they're better as a whole than they are in any one individual. And I think that's uh, probably the greatest thing you can say about them. I'm not saying that we don't have some talent up there. I'm not saying that. Um, but the ability for those guys as a whole to be better than they are um, as individuals is what we kind of pride ourselves in. Now, they'll have a unique challenge. Uh, it's it's a it's a front that, you know, with some size and some speed that, um, you know, that we, I don't think we've seen every, every single week. So that's where the game's going to be won, I believe. Thanks, Coach. Take one more for Coach Tickle, please. And that will be from Dan Tortora with WakeUpCallAtDT.com. Good afternoon, Coach. How are you? Not too bad. You? Doing well. Uh, just to speak on this conference, I mean, you're 9-1. and one. Uh, UCF is 9-0. and oh. Obviously, it's a 
big time game, prime time game coming up. Just what you could say about the American athletic and what this conference truly is from the inside looking out, knowing that it doesn't always get the respect that it deserves. I mean, it's really good. And, 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 and there's a lot of more parody, I think, than people believe. Um, you know, I think that that's what you're starting to see. Yes, you know, that's not boy, buddy. At UCF is, you know, from last year to this year is, you know, the tops of of our conference and what they've done. Um, but there's a lot of others that that are playing some really good football. And I think that, you know, it just takes some of those things to be noticed. I think it's gonna, you know, take some of whether it's prime time or not. Um, I think that you know through the bowls and and things like that, you, you'll start to see. You know, again, we mock sometimes what we don't know. And if you were a guy like myself that, you know, maybe was never in that conference or, or, you know, watched a whole lot of that conference, maybe you don't quite understand. And once you get into it, once you start to really break it down, once you start to see it and study it, you become amazed. I mean, the, you know, all you got to do is look at some of the draft picks. And in the last two years, the, the Americans got, you know, maybe two less in, in, in two years than the Big 12. So, uh, there are players, um, but I think what we're starting to see more is I think there's some really good teams um, that can make a difference. And when you look at this East Division of the American Athletic, just how difficult it is, and with you know your team rising, just what that says when there's already the South Florida's, the Temples, and the Central Florida's as well within this division. <laughs> it's been a challenge, and it's been a challenge each and every week. Um, and you know you. You know, even your crossovers, but I think the East in general has has. I mean, you're seeing it. You're seeing a, a, some parity. You're seeing some really good football games. I mean, the Temple uh, UCF game. I mean, I, yeah, you could say it was high scoring and a shootout, but that's a really, really good football game. And uh, you know, against two really good football teams, I think that you know people just got to kind of take some notice and, and spend a little time as opposed to you know what their opinions are before they you know get a good hard look at it. Well, thank you, Coach. Good luck this week. Thank you. Coach, thanks so much for your time today. Look forward to talking to you once more next Monday. Thanks.